Welcome to Set Free 24-7. My name is Robert and I am so glad that you're here. Today we're reading through Proverbs 23. We're doing a chapter a day to keep the police away and so far it's working. Haven't had any police contact in at least 23 days so we are on to something here. We're going to jump in here, Proverbs 23, and this one is titled Restrain Yourself. Yesterday we started in on a section of precepts, and today we're going to be reading number 6 through 18, and then we'll catch the rest of them tomorrow. So, chapter 23, when you go out to dinner with an influential person, mind your manners. Don't gobble your food, don't talk with your mouth full, and don't stuff yourself. Bridle your appetite. Number seven. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Restrain yourself. Riches disappear in the blink of an eye. Wealth sprouts wings and flies off into the wild blue yonder. Number eight. Don't accept a meal from a tightwad. Don't expect anything special. He'll be as stingy with you as he is with himself. He'll say, eat, drink but won't mean a word of it. His miserly serving will turn your stomach when you realize that the meal is a sham. Number nine, don't bother talking sense to fools. They'll only poke fun at your words. Number 10, don't stealthily move back the boundary lines or cheat orphans out of their property, for they have a powerful advocate who will go to bat for them. Number 11, Give yourselves to disciplined instruction. Open your ears to tested knowledge. Number 12. Don't be afraid to correct your young ones. A spanking won't kill them. A good spanking, in fact, might save them from something worse than death. Number 13. Dear child, if you become wise, I'll be one happy parent. My heart will dance and sing to the tuneful truth that you'll speak. Number 14. Don't for a minute envy careless rebels. Soak yourself in the fear of God. That's where your future lies. Then you won't be left with an armload of nothing. Number 15. Oh, listen, dear child, become wise. Point your life in the right direction. Don't drink too much wine and get drunk. Don't eat too much food and get fat. Drunks and gluttons will end up on skid row in a stupor and dressed in rags. Number 16. Listen with respect to the father who raised you. And when your mother grows old, don't neglect her. I promise not to neglect you, Mom. <laughs> buy truth. Don't sell it for love or money. Buy wisdom, buy education, and buy insight. Parents rejoice when their children turn out well. Wise children become proud parents. So make your father happy and make your mother proud. Number 17. Dear child, I want your full attention. Please do what I show you. A prostitute is a bottomless pit. A loose woman can get you in deep trouble fast. She'll take you for all you've got, and she's worse than a pack of thieves. And number 18. Who are the people who are always crying the blues? Who do you know who risks of self-pity? Who keeps getting beaten up for no reason at all? Whose eyes are bleary and bloodshot? It's those who spend all night with the bottle, for whom drinking is a serious business. Don't judge wine by its label or its bouquet or its full-bodied flavor. Judge it rather by the hangover that it leaves you with. The splitting headache, the queasy stomach, do you really prefer seeing double? With your speech all slurred, reeling and seasick, drunk as a sailor? They hit me, you'll say, but it didn't hurt. They beat on me, but I didn't feel a thing. When I'm sober enough to manage it, bring me another drink. And friends, that's the end of chapter 23. As you can see, even back in the Bible days, thousands of years ago, they were talking about sobriety. I don't know if they had any fancy programs like AA or Celebrate Recovery or anything like that, but as you can see, even thousands of years ago, this was an issue, and it's something that they decided to address, and it was important enough that it ended up in the Bible. 
So I take that it's important enough for me to look at how does that fit into my life. And for sobriety, this year has been 12 years sober. In July of 2010, I was arrested and did five years in prison, and I've been sober since then, July 26th, in fact. I was released in April of 2015, and I've been sober ever since then. I count my sobriety time while I was inside prison because there were plenty of opportunities for me to do something that wasn't the right thing. Let's just put it that way. There were plenty of drugs, plenty of alcohol, plenty of other temptations that were in prison. And that was a time for me when I got serious about what do I want the rest of the story to look like? What do I want the next piece of direction of my life to look like? And I knew that being a glutton, being acting the way that I was acting, living the way that I was living, it wasn't honoring anybody. It wasn't, wasn't respectful to anybody. I was robbing and stealing and just doing everything wrong with my life and making a complete mess of it. So I'm happy to be on this side of it. If you're going through it right now, don't be afraid to reach out. That's what we're here for. I'm blessed right now at this point in my life to be a blessing to someone else. And I love sharing a little bit of hope and inspiration along the way. And that's what Set Free 24-7 is all about, is just celebrating being set free every day, one hour at a time, one day at a time. So friends, thanks for joining along today. If you have any questions or comments about any of the verses or any of the topics that we covered here today, any of these precepts, if there's one that stuck out to you, drop it in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to engage in a conversation with you. We will be looking at chapter 24 tomorrow. If you're not from Michigan, send a little prayer our way. We are currently going through a blizzard, and I'm about to go outside here in just a little bit and see just exactly how bad it was last night. So I uh, look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow for chapter 24. Have a great day, and happy holidays. Smile today.